This video will talk about um, unions and intersections of closures of a set in a topological space. So the usual setup is to let X be a set and let T be a topology. Um, so that X together with T forms a topological space. And let's let A just be any subset of X. Uh, the closure of A is the following set. We'll denote it by A bar and we'll take it to be defined as the intersection of all the closed sets that contain the set A. Another way to think about the closure of a set, think of it as the smallest closed set that contains A. So let's look at an example. If X is the real line and T is the usual topology on the real line, meaning like parentheses A to B, parentheses on both sides, typical open interval uh, is a basis for the open sets. Well, then the closure of the interval from zero to one, what would be the smallest closed set that contains the whole interval from zero to one? I just need to throw the endpoint zero and one in there. So the closure of zero one is uh, the same interval with brackets on the ends. So that is maybe a little bit in intuition about how a closure works in a situation I think we're all familiar with. To help, us, uh, to help us play around with closures more, there's a useful characterization of what it means for uh, an element of the set to be an A bar, and it's the following. So X is an element of A bar if and only if, if and only if is a characterization, by the way. Um, so those two things go together. So X is in A bar if and only if every neighborhood of X, so every element of the topology that contains X, has to have non-empty intersection with the set A. Let's prove this, and I'll give you a picture too about maybe how the proof works as we go. So what we're gonna do, we've got this if and only if, so let's do the forward direction. And it turns out it's a little bit easier to prove the contrapositive. I'm gonna do the contrapositive of both directions. But for right now, we're gonna do the contrapositive of uh, if X is in the closure, then every neighborhood of X has non-empty intersection with A. So the contrapositive of that would be to negate both statements. And we'll start with the far right one. So Let's suppose that there exists a neighborhood that has empty intersection with A, then we'll show that X is not in the closure. So remember, we're gonna do not P, not Q implies not P. So again, let's let U be a neighborhood of X such that the intersection of A and U is empty. Well, then what does that tell me? If U is a neighborhood, if, if, I'm sorry, if U is in the topology, then the complement of U is closed. And uh, further, what else do we know? If the intersection of U uh, with A is empty, then that's the same thing as saying that A must be contained in the complement of U. All right, otherwise, you know, what if, like, how do I know that? Well, if A is, an, little a is an element of A, uh, then the fact that U and A are disjoint, that ensures that A is definitely not an element of U. So that where does A have to live? A has to live in the complement of U. Right. If A is not in U, that means A is in the complement of U. Great. I've got a little picture for you over here too. So I've got my disjoint neighborhood, my, my neighborhood U of X that's disjoint from A in this case. And uh, what I'm saying is, you know, where does A live? What my picture is supposed to say is that A has to live in the complement of the yellow, which I've colored that pinkish color. So what have we done then? Well, the complement of U, right, the pink set, X minus U, that's a closed set that contains A, but that pink does not contain X, right? X is not in the pink. Uh, therefore, what have we done? Uh, we have found that uh, X is not in every closed set that contains A, right? So we found a closed set that contains A, but doesn't contain X. So that means that X can't be in the closure of A. Now let's do the other direction. So we're gonna prove the contrapositive of the reverse direction. So just to scroll back up, what would that be? So now we're gonna to try to do the uh, only if part. So to show that every neighborhood of X has non-empty intersection with A implies that X is an element of the closure, we're gonna do the contrapositive, which means start with assuming X is not in the closure and see if we can show that not this happens. So see if we can construct a neighborhood of X that has non-empty intersection, uh, I'm sorry, that has empty intersection with A. So let's try and do that. So suppose that X is in the closure of A, then uh, let's think about what can we say. So if X is not in the closure of A, is what I meant to say just there, uh, then what can you say? So there has to exist a closed set that misses X that contains A as well. And uh, in this case, what does that say then? Well, if X is not in C, another way to say that is X is in the complement of C. And what else do I know? C is a closed set, so its complement is open. So X minus C uh, is an element of the topology. 
And together, what does this say? This says that x minus c is a neighborhood of x. And uh, meaning, again, just like I said, x minus c is a neighborhood of x. We've got a little picture for you right here. Right? If x is not in the closure of A, that means you have some closed set that contains A but misses x. There's the picture right there. And so x is contained outside of C here. So what else? Since A is contained in C, that means that the complement of A has to contain the complement of C, which you can see from my picture. Right, The complement of A is all of this stuff here, whereas the complement of C isn't quite all that much. The complement of C is a little bit less. The complement of C is just this much. So the complement of A is bigger and it contains that. So what do we get then? I get that, well, the complement of C intersected with A has to be the empty set. Right? If I just look at the complement of C, that doesn't contain A, right? A is too far inside. It doesn't overlap with the pink. So that's why those two things are empty. And so what have we just done? We've just constructed x minus c is a neighborhood of x that has empty intersection with A. So therefore, we found our neighborhood of x that misses A. And that's what we needed to prove. So the last thing I want to do in this video is what are some things that you can do with closures? Uh, so let's let A and B both be subsets of a topological space X with topology T. Then the following two things are true. So the closure of the union is equal to the union of the closures. But in part two, we have to be a little bit more careful. The best we can say is that the closure of the intersection of A with B is contained in the, uh, in the, uh, yeah, the intersection of the closures. So let's prove this. How does it go? Just to wrap our heads around what's going on with closures a little bit more to get more comfortable. So let's start with number one. I have to prove this equality here. And the way that we'll do that is by showing that uh, one is a subset of the other, and then we'll do the reverse containment as well. So let's try to show that the closure of the union is contained in the union of the closures. So how do we do that? Well, what am I going to do here? I know that A is contained in the closure of A, and B is contained in the closure of B. That's certainly true. And so in particular then, a union B, since A is contained in here and B is contained in here, this statement about the unions has to be true as well. So you can think about that. It's not too hard to believe. And also, what else do I know? I know that the union of you know finitely many closed sets is still closed. That's one of the axioms for a topology. So A bar union B bar is a closed set. What else do I know? I know by definition, the closure of A union B is supposed to be the smallest closed set that contains A union B. We just found another closed set that contains A union B. Uh, so in particular, I have a relationship now between A bar union B bar and A union B, kind of all bar, if that makes any sense to say. I know that this has to be bigger than this. And so I'll write that down right here. The closure of A union B has to be contained in that bigger closed set, A bar union B bar. So the next thing we need to do is the reverse containment. I need to show that the union of the closers is in fact contained in the closure of the union. And to do this, let's let, a, let's let x be a typical element in here. And again, our goal is to show that it lands in here. So if x is in the union of a bar and b bar, without loss of generality, let's just say x is in a bar, right? The argument I'm about to give works if you do x is in b bar as well. So without loss of generality saves us some writing. So in order to show that uh, x is in the union, the closure of the union, we need to figure, we need to show that, you know, any neighborhood of x has non-empty intersection with this set A union B, right? That's what it means to be in the closure. So let's let u just be any neighborhood of x. So u is just an element of the topology and it contains x. That's all we mean by it's a neighborhood of x. And I need to show that somehow u intersected with A union B is non-empty. Well, the first thing that I can say is since x is contained in u and uh, since x is in a bar, uh, what can I say? That means that uh, both of these, so a, u intersected with a has to be non-empty, right? Uh, maybe I should be a little bit more careful here. I don't mean to say that both contain x. Uh, I'm using the fact that x is in the closure of a. So u is a neighborhood of a uh, and x is in the closure of a. Therefore, I know that uh, every neighborhood of x has to have non-empty intersection with a. All right, so why is that good for us here? I've got my picture for you right there. I don't necessarily know that X is an A, so maybe I shouldn't do this picture right here. Maybe you can ignore my picture. But uh, what should I do then? I know that uh, A is definitely contained in the union of A and B, so it doesn't hurt anything if I swap out A union B, if I put that in uh, instead of A right there, right? So if you intersect A is non-empty, 
then I also get that u intersect a bigger set that contains a is not empty as well. And so here's where my picture might do a little bit of justice. If I just add somebody named b here before, that doesn't really change the relationship. Uh, I still get that uh, u intersected that bigger set now is still not empty. Cool. And so what should we conclude then? Uh, we should conclude that x is in the closure of a union b. And so finally, what does that do for me? That finishes that uh, I've got this subset relationship right here. So now I've got the two uh, inclusions, and therefore we know that once you have both subset relationships, both inclusions, that's what it means for two sets to be equal. So let's prove number two. So that was all just proven number one here, that these two things are equal. Now let's move on to proving that the closure of the intersection is at best contained in, or maybe most generally is what I mean to say, maybe not at best. So generally we can say that the uh, closure of the intersection is contained in the intersection of the closures. So what would that look like? And again, this is kind of a typical element chasing proof. Let's let X be an element of the intersection of A with B closure. And notice the following. So I know that the intersection of A and B is definitely contained in A, right? A intersect B is the stuff that's in both A and B, therefore it's in A. And I know that A is contained in the closure of A. I'm gonna do the same logic for B. I know the intersection of A with B is definitely contained in B. And I know that B is contained in B bar. So what do I get then? I get that uh, A intersect B closure, I know that's the smallest closed set that contains AB, but what else did I show? I just showed you here's two other closed sets that contain A intersect B. So what's the relationship have to be between A intersect B bar with A bar? I know that uh, A intersect B bar has to be contained in this bigger closed set A bar. And similarly, A intersect B bar has to be contained in B bar, right? I found two other closed sets that contain A intersect B. So if this thing is the smallest one, that means that this guy, A intersect B bar, has to be contained in both of these closed sets. And so what do we get then? If A intersect B bar is in both of these, then that means that A intersect B bar is in the intersection of A bar and B bar. Now, just be careful, just to show you in general, how can you just get a containment there? So what's an example when you get a strict containment? Meaning, what's an example when these things are not equal to each other? And we don't even have to look too, too far into like some weird topological space. Let's let x be the real numbers, and let's let t have the usual topology. And so let's let a be the interval from minus one to one, and let's let b be the interval from one to three. So I've drawn you a little picture over here, and notice that like those two things, um, they, don't, they don't overlap at all. So the intersection with a and b, is empty, right? They don't overlap at one, neither set A nor B contains one. But let's take, uh, so one more thing here. So what if you take the closure of the intersection? Well, that's still just the empty set, right? The closure of the empty set is still empty. Now, what are we gonna do? Let's compare that to what do we get when we take the uh, closures one at a time? Well, the closure of A is, I just put brackets there instead of parentheses, and the closure of B, in this case, I just put brackets there instead of parentheses, and now let's look at what's the overlap of A bar with B bar. Well, now both A bar and B bar have the point one in them. And so A bar intersect B bar is one, and what are you supposed to compare? On the one hand, you get the empty set when you do the closure of A intersect B, but on the other hand, when you take the closure separately and intersect, you get one. So those two things are not equal. And so, right, the singleton one is not the empty set. And so that finishes, again, an example of where you get a strict containment here.